is so much more that you require of us. More than being approved of by men. More than being well thought of by kind strangers, friends and loved ones. But what you require of us is that we yield everything we have, that we place it back in your hands, that your will will be done in our lives. And this day, we give ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to you that not our way, but your will will be done. Bless the preach word now that says here we are. Everything we are, everything we desire, and everything we want to be, here we are, God. And we're yielding ourselves to thee. Bless the preach word that it may fall on fertile soil. That when we leave this place, we will go back to the vineyards you have given us and enlarge our territories, increase the place of our habitation, that your perfect will will be done in our lives. These young and not so young ladies, the brothers who are here, all of us your servants, we open our hearts and our minds to you tonight. And say, any way you bless us, we'll give you the glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you this evening. Jesus gave his all for you and I that we might live and have the right to enter into the kingdom of God. To our leader, Bishop Winbush, in his absence on this evening, Pray that he is watching by live stream and then to our supervisor who made it possible that we have enjoyed this week. To her lovely cabinet who worked so hard to bring this about. And to my fellow laborers in the gospel ministry, all of the ministers of the gospel, our very special guests, my friend, who have just spared no pains in allowing God to use her. And she does the same thing for us year after year in the International Sunday School Convention. And we thought it would not be robbery to bring her to be with us on this evening. Tonight, I realize time is already far spent. But I have just a brief Sunday School lesson for you tonight. And if you will, i like to just get right to the heart of the lesson. Comes from the preacher, the crying and complaining preacher who discovered wisdom and gave us the book Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. And if you don't mind, just stand for the reading of the word. That seems to be the politically correct thing to do nowadays. And when I read in the book, in the Old Testament, Ezra had the people to stand as they read and respected the word of God. And as we learn better, we praise God. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and I want all of us, if we will, if we will read verse 10 together, I'll read verse 11, and then we'll read verse 12 together. Verse 10. If you will, read that, please. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. And verse 12 together, for man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare. 
So are the sons of man snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and the saints said amen. amen. Look at somebody sitting real close to you and say whatever you do, whatever you do. do it well. Look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're not going to do it well, don't do it at all. I wish I really had time to make this Sunday morning. But the times we live in call for some radical movement from the body of Christ. While you were here praising and magnifying God the other morning, some crazed gunman in Oregon asked everybody in his class, if you are a Christian, stand up. And because the saints are never afraid, because we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, these individuals stood up and he said, I've got good news for you. You're going to meet your God in a little while and started shooting them one by one. We are living in dangerous times. Over there in Syria, the war is expanded and now Mr. Putin from Russia has decided to add to what America has already done. We're fighting Hassad and he is arming him and all of us are trying to fight those individuals in the name of their God Allah who are beheading folk left and right. The Bible warns you to watch out when America and Russia get on the same side. Oh I wish I had some help here. If you have been watching the presidential elections you understand we've got some dangerous individuals trying to lead our nation. They don't care what they say. They don't care how they say it. They don't care when they th They make me just a little bit nervous. If I didn't know that the Lord was on my side, I would be really concerned about where we are going. I'm understanding and you've heard me say it time and time again that America we live in now is reminding me of the saying of Charles Dickens in his tale of two cities. We are living in the best of times and yet the worst of times. But as we live today, the master have called all of us male and female to arms as those brothers who had to defend our nation time after time, now God is calling us to a revolution that will change the face of the planet and let everybody know that Jesus is soon to come. Now, there are a whole lot of folks that want to be on this team, but everybody can't join this team. A whole lot of folks that want to say, I'm on the Lord's side, but not everybody can be on the Lord's side. You see, when you are building something wonderful, something marvelous, something that's going to be changing the lives of everybody, you cannot afford to have just anybody on your team. Oh, look at somebody and ask them, are you ready? A whole lot of us have not done what the master have called us to do because we're carrying dead weight of a lot of folks who say they love Jesus and they only serve him with their lips but not with their hearts. Oh, see, whatever thy hand findeth to do, the prophet said, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. In other words, we only have a limited time to be here. The other day I woke up and discovered I was older than what I thought I was. See, I have this car that is a 1955 Chevy two-door hard dot Bel Air, you know, the kind that's real cool looking. And, 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 and I've always dreamed that I was the same age as my car. But the other day, Mother said, no, preacher, you're not the same age as a car. You got to move after a while. And when I put it on the calculator, oh, my God, I was closer to the big number than I thought I was. And so I said, I must, look at somebody and say, get in a hurry. 
Now, you, you, you are enjoying your life now because you're young, you're energetic, you can do all kinds of things, but there will come a day in a little while as the master told Peter, you won't be able to go where you want to go. Somebody's going to lead you by the hand. So while you have your strength and while you have a reasonable portion of your good mind, you need to do it. Somebody help me say, do it well. We're living in a day when a whole lot of folk in the churches are not giving God their very best. I am concerned about our churches and our people. I've been planning churches for a long time. Been giving my grocery money, my light bill money, my vacation money, everything I can find. I'm throwing it into the will of God saying, Lord, help me to usher in the kingdom of God. But then after we have educated our young people, sent them to school, made sure they got their training, made sure they didn't drop out, didn't get caught up with drugs and alcohol. When they graduate, now they're going to the other side of town because they're saying our gospel is no good. If it was good enough for your granddaddy who cut grass, hello somebody, plowed a mule if he needed to, drove trucks, worked in the sawmill, and did whatever so that your mother and father would have it to give to you, it ought to be good enough for that next generation. Anybody hearing me here? But there's something wrong if at your church there are no babies crying. Something wrong if there are no young people working on your last nerves, asking you for money to put in Sunday school. Something wrong if all around you, you have nothing but folks who need Geritol in the morning, ease in the afternoon, and ensure before they go to bed. Y'all don't like this message? You invited me to preach, amen. But you and I have to realize what the prophet is saying is true. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not here forever. And so for those of you that think you have these licenses and that makes you entitled, that makes you privileged, that makes you better than everybody else, you have them for the wrong reason. The reason you have these titles, the reason you have those licenses, the reason you have that position is so you can pour yourself into somebody coming behind you. Ah, the, song, the Lord said, I prayed for thee that thy faith fail thee not. And he told Peter, and when thou art what? Converted. Strengthen your what? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Who's coming behind you? Have you prepared anybody to take your place? You're not going to be there forever. You won't be sitting over here forever, ladies. I don't care how you paint up, hello somebody. Dress up, shoe up, put on all the best of clothes. After a while, what's underneath those clothes? Going to be harder to get out of bed one morning. It's going to be harder to see past the red light one day. It's going to be difficult to understand what these children are talking about, what the next language is. You must be preparing somebody to come behind you to finish the work that God bless you to start. Look at somebody and tell them, do it well. Sometimes we as saints of God and as men of God, we think we're the all that and the whole bag of chips. We think we're the first word, the second word, and every word in between. But if you have read your Bible, God is always doing a new thing. Can I get a witness here? He's always raising up another generation. He's always looking into the future to see who I can choose next, who I can prepare next, who I can have ready to do the job that you and I must someday go on to glory to get our reward. Shame on us if we don't leave people prepared to go to war. Shame on us if there's no one else left to go in the war room. Shame on us if our own sons and daughters are lost to the world because we were busy doing church work rather than kingdom work. You missionaries have no business on the field and your baby in the club. 
You have no business trying to witness to Susie's husband and yours don't have any respect for you at all. You have no business trying to tell other folks how to get their affairs in order and yours is raggedy from the head to the toe. We must first be an example of the gospel that we preach and the gospel we're supposed to live and the truth we're supposed to share with other folks. How are we going to tell the world love one another and you don't love the woman sitting next to you? How are we going to tell our husbands that the Bible says you need to do this and do that and you're not even doing it for him? You have no respect for him. You're worse than Esther on Sanford and Son. You old heathen beating him with the Bible ain't going to get him saved. You need to love. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. I guess it's my last time preaching for your convention. Look at somebody and tell them, do it well. I'm going to prayer meeting and the house dirty, amen. Going to prayer meeting and last week's dish is still in the sink. I'm going to meet the saints in an all night shut in and you didn't vacuum the floor, didn't put, oh y'all don't hear me here. Roaches running all over everything, claiming this, that, and the other and you go and call on the name of the Lord. Oh, I wish I was in the right house. Your husband haven't had a hot meal since he left McDonald's, amen. And you talking about, I'm going to meet the pastor. You need to, oh, Jesus. Look at somebody and say, do it well. How do you expect God to bless you in the ministry, bless you on the streets, bless you as you go from place to place and you have not taken care of H-O-M-E first? I love women. I support women. I believe women should be in ministry. I encourage the sisters from my church to go forth. I look forward to having them do what thus said the Lord. But charity must begin at... Look at somebody and tell them do it well. A whole lot of us have several reasons that we don't want to do it well. But I come to tell you tonight that as I look in the mirror every day, as I ride my bicycle 10 and 12 miles each morning, as I try to eat right and do the shakes and, 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 and try to wear the right kind of clothes and do whatever, it still seems like every day I'm getting a little older. And the master reminds me, do you have a replacement for all the stuff that you are doing? Do you have someone to take your place as dean at the USAC? Do you have someone to take your place in Sunday school as a leader of the world's largest Sunday school? Do you have someone to take your place when the time comes for you to step down as pastor because you won't speak the same language as the folks that are in the church? Do you have someone to take your place in the business to run? Have you given your children what it takes to handle money, to handle their family, to rear their children, to do what thus said the Lord. Preacher, have you handled your business? That's why a whole lot of us are afraid of being alone with our thoughts. And so you have to always be surrounded by other folk who are going to make you feel something that may not necessarily be true. But when you get alone with your thoughts, then you're going to do as this poet said, to thine own self, be true. And if you would be honest and be truthful to yourself, have you witnessed enough at the place you call home? Have you witnessed enough to the one who wears the ring on the third finger of the left hand sleeping on the pillow next door to you? Have you done enough to reach them that their souls will not be lost? Have you done enough that the promise that God made you, that the offspring of your body and your children's children, children, shall, have you done it well? Look at somebody and say, no more excuses. Why not, preacher? Because souls are dying. Christians are being persecuted for loving God. Not only overseas, but now in Oregon. 
And if they're going to do it in Oregon, we, we never thought mass murders would come to Lafayette. But the Lord sent us a wake-up call by having a brother from Alabama to drive all the way to Lafayette get him a room at the Motel 6 and decide, I believe this is a place I need to shoot up a few people. Today is Lafayette. Tomorrow, it may be Monroe. It may be Shreveport. It may be Bastrop. It may be Mansfield. It may be Kicha, Long Street, or Halton, or wherever you're from. Look at somebody and ask them, are you ready? My brothers and sisters, the future is at risk. You and I have no time to be worrying about who's preaching the best, who's got the best delivery, who is saying it better than somebody else. Church is not a campaign for a political office. This is a place where souls are to be saved. If you didn't like me before, you ain't gonna like me after tonight, so thus saith the Lord. This is not an opportunity for you to win a popularity contest. This is a place where either you have the power and the courage to say what thus saith the Lord, or you need to go sit down. The future is at risk. Tell your neighbor, tomorrow is already here. There was a lot of things that I dreamed about when I was in my 20s. A lot of plans that I wrote down in my journal for when I got to be 30. And by the time I got to be 40, this was where I wanted to be. But you know what? Time gets in a hurry when it concerns your dream, when it concerns your future, when it concerns the things that you desire to do for God, the things that you desire to leave for humanity. Time gets in a hurry when you are on the battlefield for the Lord. And since time is not waiting on us, it is now time to go to work. Many of us are telling God, I'm busy. Wait till I get through. I'm busy. Wait till I get married. I got to find a husband. I got to go to blackfolks.com, matchmaker.com, getaman.com, findawoman.com. I got to go do whatever, let myself be found. I ain't hiding, Lord. Here I be. And the Bible very, speaks very clearly. He that findeth a wife findeth a what? Look at somebody close to you and ask him, are you a good thing? <laughs> if you're not doing it well, you're not a good, uh, well... If you're not sincere and committed, you, oh, yeah. if you got to be at the mall every other, if you don't know how to save, if, if you don't know what you, the spirit of procrastination is alive and well. I'm going to do it later. I'm going to move it later. I will pick it up later. I'll speak the word later. I'll go witnessing later. I'll go pray later. I'll help my church later. I'll help my pastor later. I'll be faithful at going to do what I'm supposed to do, what I'm called to do, what I'm chosen to do later. How much longer must we wait? How much longer before you feel the fire of God burning down in your soul until you say like Jeremiah, I said I wasn't going to say it, I'm not going to preach it, I'm not going to do it, but it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. And then when you meet somebody young, don't know any better. They haven't been beaten up by the saints yet. Haven't been stomped on by missionaries and elders yet. Haven't been had their coattail pulled by preachers and deacons and others and told, sit down to your time. Come. When you find those young men on fire, you want to take some water and put their fire out. Shame on us. Shame on us. Just because somebody poured a bucket of water over your head and told you it was raining, it does not give you the same privilege to put somebody else's fire out. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, don't put my fire out. Tell somebody on the other side, say, please, 
Don't put my fire out. God has given all of us an assignment. He told Jeremiah, you're not too young. Jeremiah said, no, I'm young. I'm, I'm, I'm still, don't tell me you're a child. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you. And I called you. I committed myself to super, to Elder Winbush while he was still in Vera's womb. And said, this is my prophet. This is my servant. This is my child. This is my musician. This is my preacher, my pastor, my leader. This is my example. Even before he could cry. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And just like God put it in that young man, look at somebody and tell him, he put it in you also. I didn't put your fire out. Your bishop didn't put your fire out. Church mother should have never been able to put your fire out. And all of those who are beating you down and jumping on you, all you have to do is say, well, baby, God bless you. Go to the next corner and keep on preaching the gospel. When they stoned the apostle Paul, said we got rid of him, showed him, and thought he was dead. So after the Sabbath, we'll bury him. But when they came back looking for him, by the power of the Holy Ghost, he had risen again and 30 miles down the road preaching the same gospel they told him to give up on. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got to work. Come on, tell somebody else, you got to work. You have no choice. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. God says you're not too young and you're not too old. And for those of you who are struggling with money, he has given you something greater than money. Somebody help me say favor. favor. Oh, have you tried to spend it lately? See, where money can't open the door, favor will. I needed an elevator. I couldn't afford one. But today I got to call Walmart going to buy me an elevator. Anybody want to shout favor? My little sister needed to become wealthy one day. And so she's only about this tall. Amen. Her husband was only about that tall. But God gave her a 6'8 giant. Hello, somebody who plays for LSU. Somebody want to shout favor? If you look around you, there is somebody trying to bless you. There is somebody trying to do something for you. There is somebody who wants to encourage you, want to inspire you. But you must not be afraid. You must not be lazy. You must not be ashamed. You've got to do whatever you are doing. Do it well. And they will run to you and say, let me help you. Oh, I wish I was in the right house. They drug me to court the other day. And Superintendent Nation, while I'm sitting in court, I said, oh, Lord, this is like Perry Mason. I had to get up and go testify. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you, God? I said, I do. I was so glad to get off the witness stand. And I said, praise the Lord. I'm never going to be pitying those folks on law and order ever again. It is nervous up there. But when I went to sit down, the young man sitting beside me said, you know anything about a Gethsemane church in these day in Macomb? I said, yes. He said, uh, I understand they trying to get some things done. I said, yes. He said, when you get out of this courtroom, you're going to get a call. I said, yes. Later on, I got a call. Can anybody say amen? amen? It was some people with a lot of money. That's all right. I'm going to talk to you anyway. Whenever you say money, that's a cuss word to some of you church folk. But somebody help me say a whole lot of money. And they were not my color. They were not my gender. Gender means male and female. Hello, somebody. 
They were of another persuasion, another gender, or whatever. But when they drove up, I'd had no shame. They were in their BMWs and Mercedes Benz and Audis. And they said, we're looking for the Bishop Gatlin. I said, here he is. How may I serve you? Then they told me what all they do. I said, I'm, I'm the one you're looking for. I got what you're waiting for. Woo! End of the story is I signed the contract yesterday. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. Help me shout favor. I didn't have money, but I had favor. I didn't have silver and gold, but I had favor. You may not have a lot of money. You may not drive a Cadillac digging in the scene with a gangsaline, but when you have favor. You have to forgive me. I'm a child of the 70s. Amen. When you have, somebody help me shout, favor. favor. Favor will help you to get groceries at no charge that you can give to the poor. Shout favor. Favor, favor will have the police to send people to cut your grass, clean up the neighborhood, patrol up and down the streets while you are witnessing. Somebody shout favor. Will get you a police escort from the house of God all the way to city hall and back. Blue lights flash. They'll think you are a dignitary, a UN counselor, or the president of the United States of America because you have. I've got to close. God has given all of us an assignment. But look at somebody that said, make the position. Don't let the position make you. They didn't get it. Look at somebody else and say, the preacher said, make the position. Don't let the position make you. Nobody told you you had to dress up every day of the week. And you're the only person in your neighborhood dressed up. They don't want to hear you. No one told you you could only go if you had a certain kind of car. Walk. Ride a bicycle. Catch a ride. Go where the people are. No one told you you had to sound like somebody else, preach like somebody else, act like somebody else, have pulpit mannerism like somebody else. Look at your neighbor and say, be yourself. Yeah, some of you sitting on me, but I don't mind. You don't want to be yourself because you don't like yourself. Shame on you. God made you. He made you wonderful. He made you marvelous. He created you out of nothing and designed and specifically put everything you have in you. He does not make mistakes. Look at somebody and tell them I am what God made me. If you don't like it, take it up with God. When you make the position, you'll be a dreamer. When you make the position, you will be one of those who will study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you make the position, you will understand that you are to explore this world that God created. That there are no limitations placed on you except the ones you place on your. And if you wake up and look in the mirror and say, thank God for you. You are what God says you are. God says you are wonderful. You are marvelous. You have favor. God says you walk in his anointing. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. God says that all things are available to you if you act in the mirror. God says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper this day. God, 
And if you don't know what to say, tune in to the prayer line. Ah, Mother A.G. will tell you what to say. She'll tell you what to read. She'll tell you what to believe. They will even pray for you so you will be reminded that you are somebody. Oh, if you already know you're somebody, just wave your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Now, some of y'all are not going to like this, but you're going to get over it. God used some folk who are not just like you. Wow. They don't talk like you. They don't dress like you. They don't act like you. They don't have church like you. Brother Gatlin took me to church the other day. Everybody in the church got up and started line dancing. They were getting it too. <laughs> All around the church. Yes, they were. And they were looking at us like, what's wrong with y'all? I got up. <laughs> to the left, to the right. <laughs> yes, I did. Y'all think mother can just move like this? Mother got some other moves too. Hey, man. She was up, back. The whole church, look at somebody and say, the whole church. Praise God. Not one person, Superintendent Billy, was in the seat. Even the old mothers, old king. The whole church. People who had handicapped, they were getting it with the one leg. Couldn't move but one. But they were praising. It wasn't no 15 minutes. They went for an hour. And they went, and when they got through, they went, woo! And if you'd have asked them to do it again, they would have gotten up and did it again. I was like, my God, how do we get whatever they have and bring it to our side of the waters. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And my God, I mean, they walked to church. Some of them didn't have shoes on. Some of their clothes were raggedy, barely on their bodies, and they didn't go, oh, he is my daddy, oh. They praised God, magnified God, jumped in. Oh, I was so tired. Didn't know if I'd be able to preach when I got through. And when I got through preaching, they got up and started all over. Because they love Jesus, they did everything with all their might. Look at somebody and said, do it with all your might. We have praise and worship with us. Some of us looking at our watch, how long are they going to sing that song? My God, it's been five minutes already. How long they gonna sing that same song? How long you gonna say yes? He heard you the first time. How long you gonna say glory, glory, glory? You didn't say that when you were in the club. You didn't say it when you were in the juke joint. What's that place up there in Bastrop coming out? Around midnight, it just get right. What's it? Jewels, yeah. Jewels place, yeah. I'll be leaving Mount Zion and pass by Jewel. I said, oh, they getting ready to juke now. Cars on side of the road, all up and down the highway. You got to pass by slow because they stumbling out the club and look like they done had a good time. Broke, drunk, still heartbroken. On their way to hell, and we go to church and don't even want to clap our hands. Don't even want to say glory. Don't even, but when you are on the other side, they had to put you out. Y'all go home one more time. Go home. Turn the lights on. You didn't get it when they flicked it, so now they turn them all on. Music stop. You still moving.
And now that you're on the Lord's side, you want to act like you got polio feet or something, amen. Want to act like you can't really give God glory and you can't give God praise and you can't lift him up and shout hallelujah. Anybody glad to be on the Lord's side? Anybody glad to really be saved? Filled with the Holy Ghost? Come on and help me shout glory. You see, the reason that I have to praise him is because God takes no good folks and he makes something out of us. You don't believe me, but maybe you'll believe the Bible. Moses was a fugitive running from the law, but God made him a futurist because the future of Israel was in the hand of a murderer. And some of y'all know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, it could have been you, your son or your daughter that was in the same position. But God made a way out of no way. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have to do it well. Now come on and shout glory. My, 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 my. When I think about David and all the changes that he went through in his life, one day he was a child. The next day he's a champion. One day he's a shepherd. The next day, he's anointed king. One day, he's a king with everything going on. And the next day, he's a sinner, not down to the ground. But I'm so glad that I heard Brother David say, created me. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Somebody shout glory. Come on and shout glory. Shout yeah. Come on and say yeah. Woo. My, 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 my. Let me give you one more point. Look at somebody and say, the spirit of excellence is all over you. They didn't hear you tell somebody else. Tell them, the spirit of excellence is all over you. You don't want a half-baked cake. You don't want a poke chop that was not fried all the way through. You don't want your steak red on the inside, blood running out of it. But look at somebody and say, friend of mine, do it well all the way through. God wants you to be well done, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and a mighty burning fire so that when he sees you, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Somebody say yeah, say yeah. The Lord says, I dare you to win. I dare you to be a champion. I dare you to go forth. Though you're hated by others, they wish they were you. They find fault in all you do. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad. The preacher said, I look to the left. I looked to the right, I searched all over, and I saw nothing under the sun because the race is not to the swift, nor Lord, nor the battle to the strong, not bread to the wise. You don't have to be wise in order to be rich, but if you wait on the Lord, I said, if you wait on the Lord, your time is coming soon. If you wait on the Lord, your husband, 
your wife, your children, your husband going to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, yeah. Tell God, yeah. Everybody standing. I've got some more, but I hear the Lord saying this all to time. It's all to time. I hope you don't mind my being transparent. I've discovered that I just need to tell it like it is. And I ain't scared. And I'm not ashamed of what Jesus has done for me. I want to thank you for praying for my baby brother in the hospital since April. A couple of weeks ago, he said, look at me. I'm on my way home. And I said, Lord, I thank you for sending him home, but I still need him to be saved. A couple of days later, I got a text. He said, I was in the gym rearranging the weight machine so I could work out. And while on my knees, trying to move the pen, Jesus met me. Oh. Glory to God. He said, I can't quit crying. I can't quit telling him thank you. I can't quit praising him for how good he's been to anybody hear what I'm saying? Look at somebody close to you and tell them, don't you dare give up on anybody that belongs to you. The Lord said tonight, when you leave this convention, we shut down here Saturday and you go back to your house, if you would love that man, love that woman, love that child, if you would go to your war room on the people that mean so much to you about your ministry, about your church, about the man or the woman in the mirror, you will never be the same again. Bishop, you just don't know how tired I am. You just don't know what they did to me. If you could see me with spiritual eyes, supervisor would tell you I've been cut from head to toe. I've got wounds and bruises all over my body and my heart from the people that I loved and helped. Bought land for them, bought cars for them, bought vans for them, built them churches, saved their marriages, supported their children, fed them when they were sick. Taught them how to live right. Taught them how to serve God. Placed them in ministry. And then they... And I told God, I'm through. From now on, I'm going for myself. Not another preacher, not another anything. I'm finished. If you're not satisfied with what I've already done, too bad, God. And he said, boy, you can't talk to me like that. I said, well, Lord, you know what I mean. I don't mean it all like that. He said, he said you better get a grip. Know who God is and who you are. I said, no offense, Lord, but I'm through. And I kept hearing him say, there is more that I require of you. Some of the folks from Gethsemane is here. When Mother and I got here a couple of days ago. We had two preachers. I had my first minister's class the other night. And in a matter of weeks, I think there are now 12 of us. 12 of us. Not counting the sisters. I haven't gotten around to the sisters. It's just the brethren. Oh, don't fool yourself. Women can proclaim the gospel. 
says so in the Bible. Amen. The, Bi the Bible says so. And we haven't even gotten to them. Just 12 brothers right now. And a couple others say, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I'm like, oh, Lord. And I'm so thankful to be in the will of God. I'm so appreciative that he thought enough of me to, in spite of my ignorance, my weakness, my being mad at him, my being disappointed, my not understanding that he was preparing me through all the hurts, the cuts, the bruises, the bleedings, the beating, the being lied on, being talked about, friends walking away. It was to get me ready. to do a greater work. We have two altar calls tonight, but we're going to do them at one time. First group is for those of you who know you have been chosen and called by God, but you have not been doing it to the best of your ability. You've had excuse after excuse. I ain't got no money. My job won't let me. My people won't let me. I have nobody to encourage me. My pastor ain't bound. And all. God said, I don't want to hear any of that. All I want to know is if you are willing and he's going to bless you. That group will come to this side. And then there's another group of folks here. You know you're called. You know you're chosen. You know he has been chasing after you. And because of what you see us go through, what you see us face, the tears in our eyes, the pain that we go through, you're like, huh, never happened. I'm going to stay right here because if I got to go through all that, Lord, you can keep it. But let me inform you. When God makes choice of you, he never changes his mind. Quentin, I was on my way to Simcoe Street. I was going to dance tonight away at RZ Vegas Pool Palace. But the preacher caught me before I could get out the dorm. He came a half hour early. And when I got to church, there was no room in the back. And the only place to sit was on the second row. And in my cool clothes, my club clothes, the Lord saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost, called me to preach, and gave me that pretty little girl over there all in five minutes at the altar. And while he was telling me that was my wife, she was on the organ, he was telling her, that's your husband. And she was crying, oh, Jesus, no, no. Everybody thought she was in the spirit. She was crying, no, I don't want a preacher. He black. <laughs> he ain't got good hair. <laughs> but God knew. Ain't nothing like the truth, huh? For all of you who've been running from your calling, Come on, right on this side. For all of you who are not been doing it to the best of your ability, but you are making a pledge to God tonight from now on, those assignments, those ministries, those things that he have chosen and called you to do, you're telling God, I'm going to do it, so help me. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to do it. You come on this side. The doors of the church are now open. Those of you that want to do it well, come on over here. Those of you tired of running from your calling, come on over here. That's it, come on. He thought I was worth saving. Get a mic, Quentin. Come on, there's some other people who've been running from your calling. Don't be afraid. He said, Lo, I am with you. Somebody help me say always. Come on. 
Come on. You're going to be running for the rest of your life. You may as well surrender and say, here I am, Jesus. I'm tired of running, tired of hiding. I'm tired of pretending to be something I'm not. You called me, you chose me, you loved me enough that you gave your life for me. So here I am, Lord. Come on, he's calling you right now. So I could be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. He thought I was worth So he came and changed my life. He thought I was worth So you, so I can be, and I can be, and I can tell, tell everyone I know. He thought I was worth saving. Yeah. surrendered your life to him oh my god anybody want to help them give god some praise all of these young people who have said yes to the lord yes i'll be your missionary yes i'll be your preacher yes i'll be the servant you're calling 
Yes, I'll go to the foreign fields. I'll go to the jails. I'll knock on doors. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Lord, I say yes. Oh, my, my, my. Somebody help them to praise God. Help them to praise God. Come on, altar workers. If you work with these over here. Come on, come on. Somebody say praise God. Come on and say praise God. I can be free. I can be whole. I can tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. forsaken me you're not hearing me what's wrong you're not touching my husband my children my th we, we have all been there we have been there our children have made us stretch out at the altar and stay there all night long because we ask God how am I going to save other folks children and I can't save my own we've been there and I'm telling you that God will hear you. He will answer you. He will bless you. When you give him your best, he will do the rest. Come on and lift your hands and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, everything I do from now on, I do it well. From now on, you get my best. From now on, no reservations, no excuses. Here I am, Lord. I'm sold out. Come on and give God some praise. Give God some praise. Get ready. Get ready for your children, your family, your loved ones, your wives, your husband. Get ready for your ministry to take off. Get ready for Jesus to bless you. Uh, Come on, give God the praise. Come on, give God the praise. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will praise you forever, 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 forever.
bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you that you thought I was worth it. That you thought I was worth it. That you went to the cross. That you died for me. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I praise you. Somebody right there around you. They've got a lost daughter. They have a lost son. Their ministry is almost dying. They're discouraged and they feel like giving up and letting go. Will you allow God to use you and you pray for that person right next to you? They may be behind you. They may be in front of you. But will you allow God to use you and everybody all over the room? Come on. Let God use you. 
and let's pray for our brothers. Let's pray for our sisters. Come on, come on, come on. If you don't mind being used by God, and when you pray for somebody else, the same power you're using to pray for them, it's going to come back and bless you. Come on, come on, come on. Let God use you. Let God use you. His presence is in the room. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. He's here to set free. He's here to make folks whole. He's here to set them free. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, come on, encourage somebody, let God use you, come on, lay your hands on that brother, lay your hands on that sister, they need the power of God, God is here to meet every need, he's here to bless, he's here to set free, come on, come on, come on, let God use you, let him use you.
His presence is in the room. His presence is meeting you where you are. Whatever that need may be, lift it up to Jesus right now. Come on. Whatever that need may be, lift it up to Jesus. Whatever it is, I don't care how hard it is, how much it is, lift it up now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you tonight. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. There's a wave of the Holy Ghost moving all over this house. Angels of the Lord are flying around this room, showering down blessings. Receive yours. Receive yours. You don't have to be here at the altar. Receive yours. Wherever you are right there, receive your freedom. I hear the Holy Ghost saying freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom! 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 You are free! You are free! Freedom! 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 Somebody say amen. Listen. Listen. God bless you this evening. These occurrences of the move of the Holy Ghost like this, God is getting ready to give it back to the church. We used to have it all the time. Every time we came to church, God is getting ready to give it back. He said, I'm giving it back. It's returning. The move of God is returning. The Spirit of God said, I'm returning, I'm returning. 
you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've been seeking him, you've been studying, you've been sacrificing, you've been giving. And so the glory of the Lord has returned. Somebody put those hands together and give a shout unto God for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord. Give a shout unto God. Shabbat the Lord. For the glory of the Lord returning. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, my God. Keep the same spirit. Keep the same spirit. Glory to God. Listen. You will never be the same again. Because from now on, we're going to do it well. Or we ain't going to do it at all. But it shall be to his glory. Your gifts, your talent. The things that God placed inside of you that's been buried. Under pain. Under stress. Been buried under your tears. Buried under the hassles that you have gone through. And the stuff life has dropped on you. God says get it up again bring it out again do it well that power of creativity is going to come back to you again your joy is going to come back that love that powers your faith it shall return and you're going to do it well somebody give God some praise again God bless you God bless you